Hello again everyone! Welcome back to Final Fantasy X, the HD Remastered. Now I know it's been very very long since I uploaded the first like two episodes. And so I was debating, I had a lot of issues why I wanted to, you know, why I couldn't continue and so on and so forth, which, which I'll get to when I actually start the game. My first concern was whether I should restart the game from scratch or just load my save file, which is about an hour in or something like that. And you know what I thought? You know, it's been a while and I'd like to keep this all in sort of like chronological sense and, and not have that time skip between episodes if, ne if possible. Isn't that long anyway, so you know what? Let's do this all over again. Let's start a new game. Uh, we're still gonna be going with the same stuff, standard spear grid. Oh, that was it? I thought there was another question. Man. I do love this game. So I have no problem restarting. And I love this version of 2 Seneca, the music, because you have the waves in the background. And you also have the fire here as well. I think those noises add to the game, or add to the music itself. So yeah, I do love this game. And uh, what I'll try to do is I'll try to be quiet during cutscenes and whatnot. And, uh, and hope to enjoy it, I guess as much as possible, you know, the um, story and the characters and what they say and do. Uh, but yeah, I couldn't, like, I stopped playing at the beginning because, well, for starters, we had Dark Souls 2 going on and I kind of didn't want to juggle two big games at once. And Dark Souls 2 had already started by then. Secondly, I didn't really know how to play the game. Like, I don't know everything about the game, even though I do love the game. And so, I really want to show everything, but at the same time, I feel like showing everything will mean things are out of order. Like, for instance, the Albed language. Should I translate that or not? And it's like, uh, that's kind of hard to do without, you know, making a mess of things or being out of chronological order. So I just decided to, you know what, let's just, let's just make it like a fresh beginning. And let's hear Titus. Listen to my story. This may be our last chance. And I hope everything's recording. Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Final Fantasy X. You know, I used to not like this music. But it's grown on me over the years. Sorry if my chat's a bit squeaky. Oh, some random dude. Boy. The ghostly boy. Control. I remember, I think I did this in the first time I played through as well. Let's look at the scenery. Ah oh, man, that looks beautiful. I think I mentioned like the first time I went through this that you know the water sort of in the background. Not not the one not the water in the lake, but the water that's sort of like how how would you say it? So sort of like it's coming out from the ground over like the archway water and the water that's, that's kind of like flowing down from a city above the rest of the city in the background. I believe in, in the original game you couldn't see the flow of water 
on those two places. I mean, the water in the lake still doesn't really flow, which kind of makes sense, you know, if it's in a lake. Uh, but yeah, the water in the background, you can see that she flew this song, which is which is really cool. Like, I'd say, you know, it's a graphical upgrade, and you know what? It looks really pretty, even though I've only played very little of it. But yeah, uh, like I was saying, what I think I'm gonna do with this playthrough is I'm just gonna make it sort of like fresh. I won't provide real hints about anything. So even the albed that we encounter at the beginning of the game, we just we'll, we'll just act like we don't know what the hell's going on, and I won't tell you what's going on, and I won't make mention of things that happen in the game like uh, that. Maybe what's the right word? Um, that may be foreshadowing something in the future. We won't we won't sort of touch on that too much. It's it's gonna be hard because you would have known you would have figured some things out before, like the first time you played, and it might not have been such a surprise anyway. But I'm so to dial back on that may be wrong, but you know, we'll just make it like a fresh playthrough. And you know what? Maybe sometime down the line, I'll explain stuff better. Like we once we get into the plot and the story. And uh, we'll treat it like a first playthrough. And I'll try to do, I'll try to talk about things I did in my first playthrough as well, in the game. But anyway, here we are, around with our millions of fans. So yeah, let's talk to them. I've, I've been a, a big fan of yours. From the very beginning. Cool. I won't let you down. Thanks. The one thing I do love about this game that was in in previous Final Fantasy games, but has not been in subsequent Final Fantasy games, is that you can talk to people, like just random people, walking around, and you can talk to them. But, but it's not really just them; it's your party members. Really. That's the one big thing. In Final Fantasy XII, you can still run around and talk to people, of course even in 13 to a really small degree but you can't really talk to your party members and so when the story sort of progresses from time to time that development always happens in cutscenes rather than in situations like this where you can just talk to people and see and see what they're kind of thinking but you can't do that in in the newer games really which is sad i think which i think it's just a missed opportunity and so not all of them have voice acting Hey, how are you feeling? Great as ever, thanks. Yeah, we're cheering for you. Are you gonna show us that shot tonight? Uh, hmm, I don't know. Maybe. You should do it for us. I forget, can these people, can these people have two lines of dialogue? The jet shot! I'll be waiting. Yeah, they do, yeah, they do. Uh -huh, so good. Uh, you don't, okay. You're Jack's son. I'd be crazy not to cheer for you. Okay, so we randomly get a name drop there, Jack's son, and the Jack shot we just heard just now as well. Good, good luck. Oh, thank you. Thank you kindly. Well, this, this, this was that ghost kid we saw earlier. The game tonight. It's very important. Oh, cool. The game tonight. It's very important. Okay, so you only have one set of dialogues, okay. So anyway, to progress the game, you have to talk to these two groups and then walk in the middle. <laughs> it's funny, I remember, I think I mentioned this before as well, but I got stuck here for like a few minutes wondering, how the hell do I proceed with the game? It's not like you can walk off screen or anything like that. Anyway, let's talk to the, our fans. Can I have your autograph? Sure. Of course. And we're going to keep his name as Titus and I'm going to be pronouncing it as Titus. That's all there is with that. Nothing to worry about. Oh, if I score a goal, I'll uh, do this. That will mean it was for you, okay? <laughs> what seat? East block in the front row. Fifth from the right. Got it. And there you have Titus already hitting on females at the beginning of the game. Can I see you after the game? You bet! Great! I know this great place! Yeah, I have no idea what that does. Thank you for the autograph! 
autograph? No worries. Can you sign this? No problem. Please? Alrighty. Me too! <laughs> Take it easy. Let's talk to him again. Hey, show me how to play. <laughs> Thanks for the autograph. No worries. Your floating house, it's cool. Floating. I guess you say it's floating on water. Yeah, I keep wanting to move the right analog stick to like control the camera, but it doesn't work. So yeah, if you go through the middle, oh yeah, we get good well, progress. Gotta go. Cheer for me. Two, three. Teach us how to blitz. Hey, I, I got a game to play. Then teach us after. Maybe tonight. Um, well, you can't tonight. I mean tomorrow. Promise. Promise. How does that chick look and see? I mean, she's covering her eyes with a hoodie. Damn. So yeah, the kids left off with some sort of salute, but oh well. We didn't really get to see it much. Man, I, I really wanted to play this game. And I think this is like, I was kind of busy as well to begin with, so this was nice timing as well. Let's play it again now. I was in a coffee shop running away from home when I heard the news. Well, listen to this. Our hero, checked, gone, vanished into thin air. <laughs> My dad must have been his biggest fan. I knew how sad he'd be. Heck, we all were that day. Zanar, I says to myself, what are you thinking? I went running straight back home. We sat up talking about Jack all night. My dad and I never talked so much. Whoa, <laughs> didn't mean to reminisce, folks. Anyway, ten years later, the Jack Memorial Cup tournament is today. The two teams that have won through to the finals are, of course, the Abes from A East and the Duggles from C South. I know there's a lot of people out there today to see the star of the Abes. In just one year, he's become the team's number one player. He's Jack's blood and the new hope of Blitzball. What kind of super play will he show us today? Will we see his father's legendary shot? I don't think I'm the only one excited here, folks. There you have it. I love that commentator's um, narration or dialogue or whatnot. Ah, come on, come on, come on. Ah, miss. Because uh, it just gives you like a sense of how I guess society is in Zanakin to, to a small degree. Um, this ball bringing families together and whatnot. I just find it a really nice, simple story, and it's all about Jack going missing. Now, last time I played this, I found some potions. Uh, and it was. Oh, I want the crowd, yeah. Okay, so I don't want to go through that until I get that potion. So this is why this was a surprise to me the last time I played because. Oh, wait. Did I talk to these guys? Oh, yeah, this is the one, isn't it? I got some. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, get it. Sure thing. Sweet. So, yeah, that. I did not know that. Follow, like. I may have known it, but like I may have forgotten about it as well, but it was definitely a surprise the first time I played this in March, because it was just like, it was just truly caught me off guard, like there's so much about this game that I just either haven't really touched on, even though I've, I found out a lot of things over the years, like practically every year I learned something new, so I mean that's awesome to me, I loved it, and uh, you know, you, you, 
you gotta love it when Diamond Effort is put into a game. That is an iron buzz, right? Cool. I like how she goes talking to everyone as well. So yeah, once we go there, well, we can still talk a bit in the next screen. Oh yeah, and the music in the background just now was Tyrus' theme. It's kind of a nice, chilled theme. Make way, make way! Yeah. Coming through. Sorry. So this is again to showcase how I guess hey, popular Tyrus is, how famous he is, at least in his hometown. Hey, let go of me! And then we're gonna be getting a cutscene up ahead, so we won't get to talk much. Well, we still can. It's not like the cutscene has much of a dialogue. Yeah. Oh, he went up on his own. So the Zanakan Ames versus the Zanakan Douglas. In some sort of spark. I do love this cutscene. And the music. Okay, and something's coming and this just cheering it on or something. Maybe he's just drunk. And this is this ball. Yeah, the this ball they show in this cutscene is a lot more. There's a lot more happening in it than for this world you actually get to play in the game. It's not much of a spoiler, but you know. I'm just warning you. Okay, something seems to be happening. It looks like that giant blob of water is sucking up things. I love that moment because you can really see the facial animation. And so this city is being destroyed. I never did realize this must be that statue that we saw at the beginning during the cutscene has been broken. I never did realize that, or I never did recognize that that was a fact. Well, can we talk to these people? No. Nope. Really want me to go. Alright, so that dude's name is Zorin. An awesome character. Okay, so we can't talk to anyone really. We can also maybe walk. I forget if we can. I think we can. Huh? 
Is that ghost kid? Huh? It begins. What? Don't cry. Okay, that was random. Silas makes a lot of noises. Some people don't like that thing. I'm fine with him, really. Hey, not this way. Look. Pull that off, front man. A gift from Jack. My old man. I hope you know how to use it. I like how Titus fumbles around with the sword because you know this is, this is not used to it. He's not used to having to fight some random piece. These ones don't matter. We cut through. Or on that end, seems like he is. Now you can do a lot of things. That, I think at the beginning of this game, to like over level your characters and whatnot. But we're not gonna do that. We don't really care. We're just gonna follow through the game and enjoy. I don't want to grind, that's the main thing, I don't really, really want to grind. I I love to go into battles under level because that's how I did it the first time. And that's how I really enjoyed it as well. So we're just going to power through. And not grind and not just any random weird stuff. So you, for instance get better stats. Or better abilities. Don't or more abilities at least. Cut the ones that matter and run. So you can attack the guys behind you, but like Orin was saying, they don't really matter. So we just cut through the front. Overkill! Now overkill is a calculation based on your attack and it's also based on the enemy's HP. Basically if you do a lot of damage in your final hit, you get overkill and that gives you more XP, I believe. And so a lot of people use that to gain a buttload of XP experience points to begin with throughout throughout the game so that you know you're kind of overpowered constantly which is fine I guess it's not that big a deal but you know oh look at that second one but you know I prefer just to play the game as is and not try to abuse anything I think because if you do it that way, at certain points the game can be slightly tough. Otherwise, the game can be pretty easy. Or at least very easy. that as well in battles where the, the characters will say random things in battles I love that and it's not just here it's like throughout the game they will say random things 
and we have our first overdrive that we can use. I forget how this goes, the, the button from. So this is Orin's overdrive and we have to key in a button from that will appear on screen. Kind of like a QTE. Um, well, you'll see. And they're much more powerful attacks that you only get when your overdrive meter is filled. And that's the meter that's beneath um, everyone's name. So beneath Orin's name, the orange meter means it's full. Beneath, beneath Titus's name, the yellow meter means it's still charging. Let's do this Dragon Fang. Go! So you have to key in the button presses in order. Titus can attack. Now this thing hits, hits us using Demi. Demi takes like a certain percentage of your attack. Uh, but because it's a percentage, it doesn't, it will, it won't ever kill you, so you don't have to heal. And we also have Titus's overdrive, sword blade. However, like I was saying before, you can, you can do things slightly differently and manipulate things slightly differently so that you get better rewards later. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold off from using that particular overdrive right now. We'll use it later so that we can get more XP later, if we remember to. Uh, but yes, with this, since this is a simple enemy, you'll just attack normally. And I don't think you get XP for killing these enemies, so if I remember right. See, I, I don't even remember these things. Like these things to me don't matter. I love what I love more most about the game is the story. That's what I enjoy the most. Which is why I've never really finished the game. Like I've never fought penance. I've never even fought Nemesis. Because every time I get it in my head to do something like that, to do stuff like that, I think to myself, you know what I'd rather do? I'd rather just play the game again. I have, on the other hand, gotten the ultimate weapons for these characters. So each character has like this supreme weapon that you can get for them in the game, and it takes a few things you have to do to get them. But you know, it's kind of somewhat worthwhile. It's kind of some of the things you have to do is kind of annoying, and people hate it. But you know. In my eyes, you really need to do it just once. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to treat this like a clean playthrough. Like we don't really know what's going on. All we know is that our hometown is being attacked. Uh, we seem to know who this orange person is, but he's kind of being cryptic. He seems to know what's going on and why we're being attacked, or at least who's attacking us, which is kind of weird, since we don't. Are we done? Is there one more? So you see, uh, the amount of damage he's inflicting on us is, has changed, has sort of gone less because it's a percentage thing. And I think we're done. I truly hope you guys don't mind me restarting the game. I doubt this is going to get many views anyway, so I wanted to kind of do it for myself more than anything else. Oh, I love that scene you can see Sid in the background. Alright, and Orin is just moving on. And we have a save point here. So this is a safe spear. And uh, it restores restores the record of your travels, basically. And also fully restores your party's HP and MP. Cool. So let's save. And, uh, so this was my old save file that I had. 24th of the 3rd. So what, six months? Almost four months since I last played? Damn. It's been a month since I've played a game in general, so I'm gonna overwrite it because I'm I doubt I'm gonna be replaying that. Cool. On to better pastures. What are you laughing at, old man? So, Lauren, let's get out of here. We're expected. Huh? Give me a break, man. So 
the person we saw in the picture is jacked. Titus is dead. Uh, hopefully you've made that connection right now. So here we just attack more monsters, which are known as Sea Scale. Miss me, sucker! So generally what I do is I attack these dudes that are flickering because um, they uh, they will uh, execute a stronger attack, so we might as well get rid of them now. Before they do that. And it's only one hit to kill them, so. Very cool. What I do love about this game as well is that you can, like, you don't have to rely on an ATB meter. If you know about Final Fantasy, you know what an ATB meter is. It's basically a meter that tells you when your next turn is. Our sort of, because it's a turn based game, which means it's kind of like the best example would be like chess or poker where uh, you take turns. So your enemy has a turn to attack or do whatever they want, and then you have a turn. Like, again, like poker or chess. And your turn is indicated by that scroll bar on the right that I think I can move it here. Yep, this is the bar moving here that determines who acts next. So right now it's our turn and then it'll be a monster turn for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, for 5 times before it's orange turn, basically. And sometimes you can manipulate that, you can do certain attacks that make your turn come up quicker or you can do certain attacks, certain strong attacks that delay your next attack. So all that comes into plan, strategy and all that. In the old games you didn't have this thing. What you had was that you just had a bar, kind of like, think of the overdrive bar that charges up over time within battle, so it doesn't really take a long time, maybe a few seconds each time. And uh, each time that charges fully, you get to attack. So sometimes you have to wait around, wait around, wait around until you can attack. Whereas in this game, even though you is still turn-based, you can just sort of quickly have 2-3 attacks. You can input 2 or 3 attacks straight away, and the game will, will recognize it, you know, in turn and do it accordingly. And I love that. At, at this point in time, you won't really see that in effect, but later on, hopefully, that's still sort of in the game. Because I remember doing that a lot in, in the original uh, PS2 version. Anyway, I don't want to get bogged down by all that. I was just trying to explain things for people who may not know about Final Fantasy and how it plays. Could be bad. That. Knock it down. What? Trust me, you'll see. I love the um, road and how it's kind of like glistening with like this water, like a small sh layer of water that's flowing on it. I like that. Uh, so anyway, yeah, we can attack the tanker now. That we have a different option that we can attack, or we can continue to attack enemies. Right now, I think I'll just attack the tanker because I think we can... I don't think we'll die so from any attacks. So we should be good. So that was an extra strong attack compared to a normal attack. That's why you run, want to get them when they're charging up, when they're flickering. But now that we have a second option, I'm just gonna hit the tanker. I also love that about this game where you, you've got dynamic cameras so you don't just see this one static scene and then you attack enemies attack. You always have this change up in the camera that follows you around especially during like final attacks or during overdrives or, do, or during magic or even just random attacks suddenly the camera will start following you around. I love that. It keeps you engaged in the battle because the battles are going to be more or less the same in concept throughout the game and we're done so what did that do? it blows up of course and Jack is coming to say hi okay so that took care of a few problems I like how at this point we're like, screw it, I don't know what's going on, but I'm just gonna listen to this dude. <laughs> he seems to know what's up.
Dude, that's a big jump. This still looks like a bad guy moment. He's just gonna step on our fingers or something like that, isn't he? Oh, there's a potential there. So, yeah. We saw earlier that the sin was sucking stuff up. You are sure. And Oren's acting weird. This is it. This is your story. It all begins here. Okay, there's some freaky stuff. Something's going on. Hey. Hey. Okay, someone's calling out to us. I don't think that sounds like Oren. My old man. Go down. Okay. So is that that looks like Zanakin again? I guess. So, what's up with that? We don't really know what's up with that. You know, where are we and why are we like floating around? <laughs> Who's that? Is that? Is that Jack? Should we be going? Oh, oh, he's a kid. I thought about a lot of things. Like, where I was, what I got myself into. I started to feel lightheaded, and then sleepy. I think I had a dream. A dream of being alone. I wanted someone anyone beside me so I didn't have to feel alone anymore I love that echo. Man, I just love it. Okay, so now we're at some random, random ass area that looks torn down. Could this be Zanakin that's been destroyed? Possibly, we don't really know. That's, I guess it doesn't really look like it, maybe. Hard to believe, maybe, as well. But yeah, I want to put a few things into context first. Well, as we travel along, I like how the water see through. But yeah, a few things into context. Um, for starters, you know what 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 just happened? You know, we were in our hometown as Titus, having a normal day. It would just it would seem like it when something came around and destroyed quite a bit of our city. Yeah, and um, who knows what happened to the people in the city? And now, at the end of it, we got kind of sucked into said something like that and now everything's kind of calm again so either this is Zanakin itself that's been destroyed completely which may be the case or this isn't Zanakin at all and um, we're, we're, we were somehow thrown here so I guess one of the few things we'd want to do is go back to Zanakin or something like that and see what's happened but the other point I want to make is that the person who threw us here would have been Sin so if we're here, then Sin must be around here somewhere. So if Zanakin, if this isn't Zanakin, that means maybe Zanakin's safe? Because Sin's not there anymore? Sin's not destroying stuff anymore? Maybe Sin took us, and if he took the effort to throw us here, maybe he's, you know, he's here as well somewhere. So he's not in Zanakin anymore. Maybe, maybe. That's positive thinking, I guess. Let's see if we got this shiny thing here. 
and so this is all bad so this is what I was talking about should I translate this I mean I don't even I, I don't know I'll bet I don't remember it off my heart to translate what this says here um, but I could have and so like part of me thought about it considered it doing it for this playthrough um, but you know what I, like I said I want to treat this like a first playthrough I guess and so this is our first time playing and we have no idea what the hell's going on um, the words in red so like Makalania there that's that's the name of a place so that so you know a name of a place is going to be the same in a different language anyway sometimes in, in Albert that's the case I know that's sometimes not the case in real languages but in Albert that's the case so the names of places are spelled the same as you would in English what do we have here? Nope, can't read it. I have to say that one of the other things that should really make mention is that I love Titus's voice actor and voice acting in general. Most of it, I'm fine with. I mean, it feels human to me if that makes sense. You know, a lot of people love, say, Final Fantasy XII's uh, voice acting and dialogue, which is fine, and I like it too. Uh, especially, you know, because it's kind of like old school English. Uh, but it listening to Final Fantasy XII feels like you're listening to a movie. It feels like you're listening to actors acting, whereas this game feels like you're listening to people just randomly talking. And that's what I love about the game. I mean, I think both of them have their pros and cons to some degrees. I think uh, it could definitely be improved in this game as well. Even the normal sort of communication, the voicing, the dialogues and stuff, some of it could be improved. Part of it is down to the fact that this is a Japanese game. It was made with Japanese in mind first and then translated or dubbed into English and so they have to um, take notice I guess. They have to fit in their English acting and dialogue within what worked for the Japanese dialogue and that may not necessarily always be accurate so it's not a one-to-one -one translation you know something that's spoken in Japanese might be say one syllable and in English it's five syllables or something like that you know so and then you're trying to shorten it down just so that the cutscene doesn't go too long and doesn't make sense anyway again I'm just talking way too much 200 gil that's money so yeah, oh yeah, it's, I think I wanted to do was, can I? Let's turn the memo. Aeons will be default for now. Help, yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Did it stay? Yeah. By having the map off, the game looks nicer, I think. And I know more or less where to go, more or less. So we should be fine. I mean, I will miss treasures here and there because again, I don't remember the whole game. It's not the treasures in the game that I care about. You know, it's not the game. Most of the gameplay stuff I, I do know, but some nuances here I will have forgotten. And uh, forgive me for that. Anyway, this is a sphere sphere you can use because throughout the game you can decipher the Albert language and you can learn it basically. Of course, how do you then learn what these people at the beginning of the game say? You know, not at that. And for instance, that um, that uh, written, uh, what was it, sign or something that we just read in English? How do we know if we restart the game? How do we know what that says? So what you can do is you can load it from here. This is like a save point, and um, basically you can load your Albert codes uh, into the beginning of a new playthrough but since we don't really have any that's our main save that's not a loading of a albed save so we don't know any albed there so there's no point so what we do is we then just leave it be now again I might miss the albed language I mean I'd have to look it up to find out where everything is I just I don't really want to do that like we'll get what we get when we come across it over time, we'll be able to sort of like make certain things out, certain words out, because we'll have 
say maybe half of the codes but you can get all of them there's some of them are missable which is a shame which are the ones I might try to look up to get uh, but some of them you'll be able to come back to them later on in the game and get them so yeah I know some of this may be confusing and I probably shouldn't be saying too much but um, I just want to enjoy the game as it is I do like the camera I mean I, I, I get the reason why people want full camera control in the game in a game like this I don't think it matters too much well actually there are points where it does matter but overall it doesn't really matter too much because your battle system takes place in a separate sort of area you just not it doesn't occur on the main screen like it doesn't occur here it you know where the uh, the um, it basically takes place on its own grid if that makes sense uh, so you don't have to have camera camera control full camera control you can you can have this sort of like cinematic dynamic camera that the developers I guess put into the game you know what I wish games now would have I wish games would have both they'd allow you to freely control the camera if you want to but then switch to a dynamic camera that's controlled by the game and one of the instances of that that you can see is in your GTA game in GTA when you're driving around you can control the camera yourself or you can have this sort of like cinematic camera that looks at the car from different angles some of it is very very hard to play the game in because you have no idea where you're going you can't really see where you're going I think it's not done well it's not done it's not incorporated really well but I think it's a really cool feature that if you had both of them I think that would be really cool and I definitely make use of both of them and anyway, let's explore this ruin I guess it doesn't look like the old Zan I mean like our Zanakin does it Zanakin we came from seemed to be a bit bigger and the statues were kind of different Okay, so that wasn't fun. So that's where we came from, I guess, because that's where the safe sphere is. That's where that treasure chest was. So I guess we'll go this way. What I mean by the game, the battle system takes place in a different screen uh, compared to like your normal walking around gameplay. Also, music's different from the original. I don't know how I feel about that yet. Maybe I'll get used to it. Uh huh. Oh. Let's leave the one on the bottom. Yeah. Oh no, is he mad? He's mad. Oh, he looks mad. Oh no, wait a minute. Are more buddies coming? Oh, this don't look good. Oh, jam! It's a big ass fish. Well, fish looking thing. Oh, okay, yeah, we should be running away too. Damn! And, uh,. Interesting point, that's probably the only section in the game where you see blood. That's about it, I think. That's the only section you see blood. Okay, no, I'm knocking now. We, we we are fighting now. I, I'm not sure this is a this is a smart idea. The, the thing looks like, I don't know, three times in height. Um, yeah. Oh well. Oh! That hurt you? Oh, he took a half hour life, man. You know what, I'm gonna brave this out. And I'm not gonna use. Because you can use healing items like potion. And we got two, and we have some already on our stash. Maybe you already handed it, handed it to us. And we're doing small amounts of damage. Oh, when we get hit, oh. So yeah, you can actually die in this battle. He just keeps taking half your HP, so. You'll live. Oh, 
Oh, you shouldn't look where you're going. Man. made it out of the frying pan and into the freezer. I thought I was going to die in this place. Oh yeah, the one thing you, you won't be able to tell is when a tra cutscene transitions into a gameplay moment because the map isn't there. But yeah, I do like Titus's narration in the game. It kind of tells you what the guy is thinking, what he's feeling, instead of just through cutscenes. So I think that's a nice added extra. It also, part of it, it kind of, I guess, again, makes you understand one what Titus is, is feeling, and it also kind of reflects things that you don't understand. So he'll comment on things that he don't, he doesn't understand, and to a certain degree, you'll be feeling the same way, so you won't understand something, and so you'll feel that sort of connection be between the character. Definitely doesn't look like Xenical. I think the fact that Titus doesn't say or make mention that this Fire. looks like Xenical or anything like that kind of gives you the hint that this isn't Xenical because otherwise he would say something along those lines. So we have a save point here. I'm not going to use that yet. We have a door here. And let's see what's up. Dane Flint! I think that's all there is there. So yeah, we're kind of cold. So the one thing we can do is light a fire. And we have a fire piece. Cool. And we already have Flint. Which we also would have needed. Can I go in here? No? Cool. Does that say something there? I can't read it. Thing here? Oh, there's a treasure chest there. Is there? Oh, sweet! I don't remember this. Oh, X potion! Damn, that's a strong potion. I don't remember getting an X potion this early in the game. Okay. Cool, like I said, we learn new things. Let us have where we have to go. Can we burn this? You know what? I didn't even know it said that. I've never looked at this before. Ah oh, man, I've never looked at this before. Can I look at this? Ah! Oh, there's a door there. Man, you know, how about this one then? Oh, these ones have soaked up too much as well. I think this is like the benefit of having this game in HD, man. It's like you can tell. Can I go back down? Cool, I can. So that's where we came from. This is the problem when you don't have a mini map. You get somewhat confused of where you came from and whatnot. Okay, so we have to go this way. How about this one? Same thing? It doesn't say anything. Cool. Oh well, here we go. Aha! I knew about this one. Let's wander around. Ooh, examine. Uh, OK, 
okay, we had to get a lot closer. Even though the prompt was there. Oh, with the bookie, I guess that one wasn't soaked. But we still have the path here. Anything here? Like, I don't remember again fully the game, so... I'm gonna be exploring a bit here and there. I mean, there's, there's generally not much room to explore. But there are some sections you can. And because of that, we get a treasure chest. High potion. So you see, this is a high potion. We got an axe potion, man. Axe potions are way stronger. We won't, we won't be using any of those until like late in the game. Also, like, when I first played the game, I, I remember hearing, like, Titus has two distinct sounding footsteps. Foot, I guess, noises. And I love that. I don't know, that was just a random thing I remember. From, the, like, when I first played the game. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to save. Because after this, we have a cutscene. And then a fight. I actually want to try something out. I hope you guys don't mind. It will, it will, um... It will be either something really cool or something really stupid. But one of the other cool things about the game, hopefully I can show it to you and then we'll see what happens. <laughs> 